Hi everyone, um, welcome back to our second uh, free webinar where we look at second level study revision course. I'm Mary Scully and I'm joined today by Mary Shalley is back with us again today. Um, in this webinar, we're going to look at how does my memory work? And I'm going to hand over now to Mary and she's going to start our little presentation for us. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, thank you Mary. Hi, you're so all very welcome back again. And for those of you who have come back to the second one, and hopefully you got something from the first webinar, and today what we're going to look at is how your memory works and this is really important because examinations are not just about memory but there's a big big part of examination that requires a memory and we're going to look at how your memory works and how you can get the information from your short-term memory into your long-term memory and then be able to put it back out in an appropriate format in your examination so we're going to start with looking at how does your memory work so Basically, we remember when we make connections or links. It's of personal interest to us. We write it down, we say it aloud or record it. In other words, we have to see connections with information and our brains are always looking for connections. There's so much information that has comes into your brain on a daily basis. And the brain is absolutely um, fascinating at actually being able to process this information. And the way that it does it to try and put some order in things is to make connections and links between things. So when you're revising, you have to make those connections and links to try and make it a bit easier in your brain to process that information. If it's a personal interest to us, in other words, we see a point to it. And the point now, unfortunately or sadly, is that we have to get through these examinations. The reality is these examinations are coming up and no matter how much we try to pretend they're not there, they are there. Yeah. And it's of personal interest to us. So this is the personal interest to us to get through these exams. Once they're done, they're done. And all they are is the hurdle you have to go over to get into the next phase of whatever you want to do. But remember when we write it down, in other words, we put it into a different format. When we say it aloud or record it, in other words, we're doing something with the information. We don't remember when we are stressed. We don't remember when we aren't interested in it. And sadly, there's lots of things that you're doing just now for your junior cert or your leaving cert that you're not interested in. But sorry, the reality is you're going to have to get interested in it to get through the examination. And lots and lots of students, when they're coming to examinations, they only study the things they like, because that gives you a sense of well-being, makes you feel good about yourself. But the reality is, if you only study what you like, then you're not going to be able to get through the examination. So we have to move that. We aren't interested into it until it becomes personal interest to us. And we don't remember when we haven't looked at it, thought about it, or listened to it long enough. You have to keep making these pathways. And anybody who attended the first webinar, we talked about making this pathway in your brain, which is really, really important. So you have to make these pathways. And the only way that you do that is by when you look at something regularly and you think about it and you listen to it for a considerable length of time that it actually gets into your long term memory. That's a good one, Mary. Yeah, I have a good example of that. Um, my young lad is, my young son is uh, about to do his leaving cert this year in 2021. And he really dislikes uh, English poetry as one of his things is that he's just not a fan of it. He just finds it that little bit difficult. Um, so we read it, he writes his questions, but then I'll ask him a few questions or he'll repeat it back to me. Um, so it's, it's kind of a good way for him to, to repeat that knowledge out loud as well as just writing it or reading it. Um, so that's, that's a good little tip yeah. there that you just gave, yeah. So what I want to do is take a couple of seconds to see if you can memorize these words. So I'll give you 30 seconds to see if you can memorize these words. Okay, so just if you memorize those words, and if you want to just write them down, take a couple of seconds just to write them down. And if some of you were just writing them off the screen, then you're only fooling yourself because <laughs> you haven't learned anything there at all. Okay. So, how many did you remember? I remembered four. Four. <laughs> okay. so I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't even bother attempting it. So I, didn't, I remember I was even losing it. Okay. So, Look at these ones here. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Give you 30 seconds to remember those ones there.
Okay. How many do you remember that time, Mary? Oh, so will I write them down again? Yeah, write them down again. So window. I remember butterfly and wasp because they were colourful. So I got seven that time, Mary. Seven. So part of that very, very simple exercise. It only took you a few seconds there. And you will remember more. And the reason you remembered more is because the words in the first list were in total random order. There was no mm. connections. There was no mm -hmm. pattern. There was no link between them. And the second list, they were grouped into categories. So the words you remember would be things like window, wall, and I can't remember what was it. Um, butterfly and wasp because they're insects and they're coloured. There was links there. There was something there with that information. It I really liked I really liked the colours of them. Yeah, the colours kind of stood out a bit more, didn't they? That's right. So you remember the green words and the red words, mm. or you remembered something like there was um, the jewellery there, something like that. You remember links, and that's what your brain is always looking for, as looking for patterns. And we have to think about our developing our brain powers. They talk about using all those buzzwords, but the key thing is that you need to put give your brain some help because your brain looks for patterns, your brain looks for connections, and you need to help your brain find those connections. So if you put the information in, in a group or an order or a color, all color coded together, it helps your brain process that information. And ultimately that's what you're trying to do. Oops, what happened there? Okay, so learning and recall. So if the information is organized into meaningful chunks, you remember more. Repetition is the key to learning and remembering long term. You need to repeat it over and over and over again. There is no quick fix for this. You need to remember by repetition. So we can't hold much in a short term memory, probably 67 things, maybe four to five things if you have dyslexia. So we have to move things from a short term memory to a long term memory. And you need to be able to bring them back out again in the examination. So reviewing the material regularly, going over the information over and over again, makes these memory pathways. And that's what you should think about. Am I making a memory pathway with this information that I'm studying? Or am I just highlighting or reading it or answering the question and not looking at it again? Yeah. So there are no memory pathways. So you need to use memory aids and you need to have active strategies. And we're going to look at some of them over the next uh, few, uh, few webinars. So how do you remember? Grouping and label, the power of association. Find association between items and points. So very simple things that could have been in the butterfly and the bee, there were two of them were insects, or they were written in the same color. There's an association, or you know, there's a pattern with it. Find the association. Break down material into categories and develop these into revision sheets. Questions and answer cards. So you have a question on one side and the answer on the back. Mm -hmm. And as Mary had said with her own son there, looking at that idea of orally asking the question, and then they give you, you, know, you give the answer back and keep flicking them over till you know them really, really well. Past exam papers, along with the mark schemes. The mark schemes are published with the exam papers. So you can look at the mark scheme and check, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. um, use your visual memory to create recordings, narratives. In other words, tell yourself stories, make yourself, make yourself, yourself a story about this piece of information. Reminder cards around your desk at home, particularly with definitions of things. So if you need to learn a definition of what photosynthesis is, go to the past papers, find the examiner's definition of past paper, copy that out, put it in a flashcard and stick it around the wall in your house. Mm -hmm. The fridge is a great place because if you're anything like my children, you're never out of the fridge when you're studying. <laughs> so have your vision notes in the front of the fridge and every time you open that fridge, you're amazing how much information will go back into your mind. Information maps, flow charts, spider diagrams, you know, as much as you possibly can to make you remember that information, because it will not happen if you don't have a memory pathway. And all of these techniques are to give you a memory pathway. You know, make me songs, mnemonics, you know, like, um, oh, you lucky duck when you remembered in primary school for remembering things like the word could, should, and would. You can transfer those mnemonics, and we'll look at some of them um, in the next uh, session when we're looking at revision strategies. And try revision tests with your friends. Try to talk to your friends about revising and how they're getting on and what strategies they have found. Somebody might have found a great thing in YouTube and share that information to help you remember. And this is the 10 envelope technique, and this works really well. And basically what it is, and I'm trying to explain this as slowly as I can, because it sounds quite complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. So you take 10 facts, 10 definitions, and you put them in envelopes and number the other, number the other you know, em envelopes, sorry, from one to 10. So you have 
In envelope one, you put your 10 facts. And then what you do is you go through your 10 facts and you read them. And which ones do you know? You know one, you put it into envelope two. The next day, you go to envelope one and you do all of those facts again. If you know anything in that envelope, you move it into envelope two. You go to envelope two and you learn, read all those facts again. If you know that, you move it into envelope three. And by the end of the time, you will eventually have all of the facts that you know moved up to envelope 10. But anything that's in envelope 10 will be totally secure because you've repeated it every single day. And I know that sounds very complex to try and explain. It's one of those things you immediately actually have to show you. You have to do it, yeah. You have to do it, but all of the information in one envelope, and as you know it, you move it into the next envelope. And you just keep progressing, and you're going over all of the envelopes until you eventually get it to number 10. It's and like it's, it's like you said with the creating the pathway in, in the boggy road or in the park. Um, you're going over and over that pathway, aren't you, to, to really create it in your in your mind and cement it there, yeah. Some of those facts might only be looked at 10 times because mm -hmm. you know them quite well. But some of those facts or this technique can be used, learned I mean, 100 times yeah. before you actually get it into envelope 10. And until it's in envelope 10, you don't actually know it. Mm -hmm. But it's just a wee technique you can look at. It sounds very complicated, but if you try it, it actually works out quite well. Yeah. Okay. And spaced repetition. You know, you can't learn everything at once and you will not be secure in that information at the first time. You might get your question right. If you practice an exam question, that's great, that's done. No, that's not done. You have to go back over it again. And that's one of the big, big mistakes a lot of people make when they're studying for exams. They study something now, they think they know it, and then they don't look at it again until the examination. And they all of a sudden they're faced with this exam and they can't remember what they did eight weeks ago, even though they got that question correct. So you need this spaced repetition in order to get things from your long term, your short term memory into your long term memory. So quick review, a few hours of first learning something new, read your notes, adding thoughts or summary, then skip a day, forget about it completely for one day. Because the important part of repetition, of spaced repetition, is the spacing, as it, you know, it says in the title. The first review should be quick, and each review after that should take longer. Review the material again. If there's something you're missing, something you don't quite understand, or you need to put a diagram in, or you need to make something to make your notes more complete, then you do it. And then take a test. And this is a scary thing, because none of us like to find out what we don't know. Mm. But the last place you want to find out you don't know something is in the examination. So you need to take the test and taking that test improve retention by 20 to 50% because you'll be a bit anxious about it and you're really focused. So take your test and see how you get on. If you don't know it, then you start again and you've time to do all of this here. And the time to do this is now. And the next review should take place three to five days later. So the space repetition, keep doing it and take your test and see what you don't know. And if you don't know something, then you can try and find out about it. Mnemonics, as I mentioned, these should be easy and they should help you remember things. Some people with dyslexia don't like mnemonics because they find mnemonics are actually more uh, demands on a cognitive load. In other words, it takes so much more effort to remember the mnemonic that they actually forget what they're trying to remember. Yeah. So if you don't like them, you don't like them. But for some people with dyslexia, and mnemonics is really, really helpful. And they help you remember things, lists of things, like the order of planets, you know, my very energetic mother just served us nine pizzas. There's lots mm. of different ones out there, but the best ones are the ones you actually make up yourself because then you remember them and they might be a bit more meaningful to you. So the order of the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. I remember that from school. I can still remember that to this day. I don't think Pluto exists anymore. I think I've actually moved him off now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but you know, if you're asked the order of the planets in the science exam, if you've learned that there, then you know exactly where they are. You'll tell which one's out of order. The same when it comes to science for oxidation. If you're doing oxidation, oil rigs, another one, oxidation is a loss, loss in electrons. Reduction is a gain in electrons. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get that confused because reduction, you always think, is um, taking something away. It's, it's the reverse, yeah. Mm -hmm. Reduction in, um, ox in electrons is actually adding it on. Okay, so yeah. the oil rig helps you remember it. And if you have mnemonics, when you go into the examination, you write your few new mnemonics at the top. You just have to write oil rig, you know, um, the, the talk to help you remember those three things but only if they're useful for you mm -hmm. because remember this is about you as an individual this is not about how I study or how Mary studies or how any of my children studied or Mary's son studied this is about how you study 
If they don't work for you, don't use them. But if they work for you, they're really, really helpful. Don't copy things. It's just passive. In other words, you want to move away from this idea of being a passive learner. A passive learner is somebody who just sits and does something and spends hours and hours of doing something, but actually doing nothing because they're not changing the information. So you need to not just copy information out. You need to rewrite the information and put it into your own words so you understand what you're writing about. You need to change the layout, turn the paragraph into a mind map or write a table or a prose or a story or something. Do something with the information. Look for links. You've already seen very simple, that very, very simple technique at the beginning. How if there's a link in something, you'll remember more words and that very simple list. So the same thing will happen when it comes to your exams. Read your information, look for links, think of things you can categorize together. So if you're doing a science work and you have to look at the techniques for an experiment, you might look at, there's all the equipment I need. And you might put that into a category and draw a diagram of your conical flask and your Bunsen burner and all the rest of it. You know, and you think, well, should, I should be past that. I'm doing um, leave and start chemistry. I shouldn't have to draw up a Bunsen burner. But that will help you remember that you need to remember the Bunsen burner is part of that experiment. Exactly. And that will then help you remember that you need to maybe be careful because there's ethanol that might go off in flames or something like that. And that will link into a safety thing. So those simple things that you think maybe I don't have to do anymore are categorizing information. And by categorizing information, you're making links. And that will help the information get into your um, long term memory. Drawings as memory. So if you have a piece of prose in your page, you know, or put me drawings and put you know to help you remember we silly things this is your revision it's not for anybody else to see mm. so it doesn't matter what you have on the page it's yours and yours alone you know and revisit it again and again over time the space repetition go back over it again don't just leave things and think you know it and not go back for weeks okay. and that all plays into what you said in webinar one mary about that multi-sensory learning doesn't it about you see it, you read it, you hear it, you do it, and, and you're getting it deeper into your memory, aren't you? Yeah, and I think that's it. the more you do with information, the more familiar you become with it. Mm -hmm. And the more familiar you become with it, then the better chance you have of being able to retrieve it if you need exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. And this, this is just one example of a thing called a revision clock. Mm -hmm. And basically, you can imagine yourself from one to two. This is all that happens. It's envisioning in your mind, and then you go from the next two to three. But the problem with this one here, there's too much information there. Yeah. You will not be able to remember all of that. That's the type of thing that you're doing now as you're got, getting ready to do your examination. You're getting your, all your materials ready. But a week before the exam or two weeks before the exam, you'll have that broken down and you'll have a, a revision clock for the urban land use model. You'll have a revision clock for the issues in the... Um, I don't know, anybody's trying to know what that means now. Urban areas, you know, and housing. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have a different, so you'll have different, that's too much for you to remember the night before the exam. Okay, mm -hmm. so you need to break that down again, but that's what you should be doing now at this stage, is getting those revision materials ready, that you can start to pull them back down again. And that's a visual representation, and you can remember in mind's eye, between one and two, the urban land use model. Yeah. And then you think of your next revision clock, and in that revision clock, between one and two, you'll have your urban land use model, but between two and three, you'll have this, between three and four, you'll have all of that taken down. Mm -hmm. So don't expect to be able to remember that much information. It's really, really difficult for your mind to process that much information at one time. Mm -hmm. okay. So don't just read. Reading information is not helpful because it's not you're not doing anything with the information. So you need to get the, read the information you're reading into note cards. You need to give a talk to someone. You need to discuss it, as Mary mentioned there. Having that oral discussion is really, really important. Explain what you've learned to a real and margin is someone else. So just talk to somebody. And you could just be sitting in a room on your own, talking to yourself, walking around the house, um, reading the information, you know, with the notes and then without the notes. And I remember my son, I said he would have uh, studied by taking his football outside and kicking it against the wall. And this is a child who was a law student. It wasn't as if he was still, he was doing his final law exams and he was still doing the same thing taking the ball outside and kicking against a wall because that's how he learned. He took the reading into learning something and doing something with that information. And then record yourself is a really good way to do it and listen back when you go out on a walk or something like that. Record your information, what you want to learn, the silly wee songs you've made up. Take that information and put it into a different format and 
get it back into your head in some other way. It's so, so important. But the most effective thing you can do is stimulate the real thing, is use the past papers questions. They're all on the examination website. They're all there, freely available. Don't pay for them. If there's some sites that you can sign up to and they'll give you them if you pay them. You don't need to. They're all there on the examination website. Plan your answer summaries. Go through the past papers, see what they're asking for you, and plan your summaries. Don't write a full answer when you're starting to revise because you, you're wasting a lot of your time with ifs, ands, buts, and you won't remember all of that in your questions. You want answer summaries, bullet points, diagrams, flowcharts, whatever. Repeat writing it until you know it by heart. So if you're planning an answer summary, you should know your answer summary by heart. Write sections of the paper, you know, sections of the answer. So bits of paper, question papers might get a wee bit of it to get a sense of what they're asking you. But the thing you need to do is to practice under time conditions. So you say to your parents or somebody at home, I'm going to go and do the first paper of um, that exam. They're not, you're not going to sit in a room for three hours and do a practice paper, but you're going to take the first part of that exam and you're going to work out that question there is going to take me 45 minutes to do that question. And you go into a room and you spend 45 minutes doing that question and then you stop. And then you see how you get on and you find out where the pitfalls were. You look at the mark schemes, but you need to practice the papers. That's the most effective way of learning. And as I said earlier, it's the most scary part of learning because then you suddenly find out, oh my goodness, I don't know. And that's the critical time for you as a learner to say, right, I don't know this. I can take control. Not, oh my goodness, I can't possibly do this. I know nothing. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know nothing. It's eight weeks before the exam. You're not expected to know nothing. Or you're not expected to know everything. And you actually, you don't not, I'm trying to say this, but phrase this the best way I can. It's not that you know nothing. You know lots and lots. But you'll just think of that one thing you don't know. And then you'll focus on it. That is not helpful. You forget about all the other things that you do know. There's one part of that one question in one paper out of how many papers? 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever papers you're doing. There's one part of one question that I, I don't know at this moment in time. I have eight weeks to learn, or whatever number of weeks you have, to learn that one part of that one question. And that's the way you need to think about it rather than taking it out of proportion. I know it's very easy for me to sit here and say, say that, but that's what you reality, that's what you need to do, because that's the most effective learning. Yeah. Is doing the past papers, practice the different types of questions, practice the different skills that are in the examinations, and we'll talk more about that there. You know, if they're asking you to evaluate a graph, then you need to know how to do that. And we'll talk more about that there in the next webinars. Okay. And procrastination, that's the biggest thing that you will do is that any excuse you can find, and I can only think of my own children, it's the only time in their life their rooms were ever clean. <laughs> it was cleaned up, tidy, anything but do work. You know, I have to go for a walk. I have to start. It's not a time to start a diet. It's not a time to start getting healthy. This is just eight weeks in your life, your exams, everything else can be fixed outside that, you know. So I don't understand it. It's boring. I don't feel like doing it today. And believe me, you can think of any excuses. I worked so hard yesterday evening. I'm really, really tired. What if I do badly? You know, what if you do badly? You do badly. Then we deal with that problem when that problem arises. Not six or eight weeks when you still have control over it. I can't do this as well as others. That may well be, but we all can do things as well as others. You can't make me do it. Nobody can make you do it. The only person that can do it is you. Not giving anything to do with the teacher, or the teacher's been off. And I remember working an A-level paper in the North here, and a child had actually written an A-level paper. The teacher didn't tell me this. And that was the answer to the question. Mm. And I just said, well, fair enough. I had, they got zero for the question, 25 marks. It didn't matter whether the teacher had told them or not. That was totally irrelevant. They got zero for that part of the paper because it doesn't matter if the teacher's been off, you've missed school or whatever. And the examination boards have given you a lot of guidance this year and given the schools a lot of guidance. And they've actually, as far as I'm aware, cut the number of questions. So you should have a good idea as to what's in the paper. Procrastination is the obstacle to your goals. Some succeed because they're destined to. Destined to. Most succeed because they're determined to. It's totally within your control. And you will do well if you put your mind to it and start preparing Make your links in your memory. Realize that this is a long, slow process. The constant repetition is the key to it. And you will do well. And really, that's ultimately what you're aiming to do, to do the best you can. And it's the best that you can do. It's not the best that anybody else can do. And all it is, is a hurdle you have to go over 
to get to the next stage in your life. And I think this picture sums it up really well. Yeah. I'll find a picture for it later. Mm -hmm. And we'll all find excuses not to do anything. But hopefully from this wee short webinar here today, you'll get an idea that you need to make those connections in your mind. You need to put the effort in and you need to do something with the information. Because by doing something with the information, then you will ultimately learn it. Okay. Great. Okay, so that any other questions or no, so that was great, Mary. Thanks so much for that. Um, I think in our next two webinars, they're both entitled Revision Strategies. So in our webinar number three, we're going to look at getting started on our revision and um, the four step process of revision. And then in webinar four, we're going to look at, again, re revision strategies around mind mapping, posters, looking after yourself, the, the stress factors and how to avoid them and all that business. Um, so we're really looking forward to webinar three and four and we'll see you back again shortly thank you thanks bye, Mary. bye.